Good morning and welcome to the ZFS Discovery Day. Just to qualify that, day means about two hours of your time where you're going to learn some very useful information. Uh, ZFS, also for our, our colleagues in other countries, ZFS, uh, it's the same thing. We're in the UK systems practice. My name's Graham Scattergood. I'm a cell specialist uh, in that team. You're going to see two of my colleagues later, Tim Thomas and Paul Needle, who are going to give you more detail. First of all, why do we call it a discovery day? Well, if you think about discovery, whether that's in the context of discovering new land or discovering new drugs or chemicals, it's a kind of eureka moment. It's where you actually find something that's going to be really useful and then you can develop it and really take advantage. And I hope in this session that you're going to achieve something like that. You're going to achieve your eureka moment. I always say, in the technical demo, we show you two days' work done in 30 minutes. This is so powerful that you're allowed to go, wow, even if you're sitting watching this on your own. So the structure is quite straightforward. First of all, you're going to go through a technical slide presentation where you'll learn the building blocks of ZFS, of open storage, and how these things can come together. We're then going to give you a technol technical demo. We're going to use some command level scripts, and we're going to show you all of the functionality, which is actually going to show you how to work it. Now, the good thing is you can also download these scripts, so you can take them away and actually use them yourself. One thing you may be saying is, why are we doing this now? ZFS has been part of Solaris 10 for at least three years. Why are we actually doing this introduction at this stage? Well, I believe we're at a tipping point in the use of ZFS. We're starting to see new open storage technology. A lot of JBOD technology was introduced uh, during 2008. In 2009, we're going to start to see the rapid deployment of solid-state disk. All of these things, working with ZFS, create a new opportunity to really uh, accelerate how you develop applications. So let's have a look at my first slide. I've only actually got uh, four slides here. So um, what are you going to learn and experience in the next couple of hours? OK, let's just go through it. First of all, we're going to briefly see why do we need a new file system. By the way, ZFS is a new file system. You're going to see how ZFS works and the key features and benefits. You're going to understand how it ensures data integrity better than other solutions in the marketplace. As I said before, you're going to see how it's an enabler for lower cost storage using things like SAS, Serial Attached SCSI, and JBOD. You're going to see how it enables this new range of solid state devices and flash devices how it gives you new architectural choices, how it improves total cost of ownership, and you're going to learn how to use commands and functions. It may, it may seem a little bit cheesy to be using a quote from Albert Einstein, but I really like this. We can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we use when we created them. File systems have been around and they've evolved with volume managers uh, over the last 20 to 30 years. This is actually saying, if we could do it all over again, we'd do it differently. And this is the difference. So here's the agenda. Understand the technology. We'll have a little look at total cost of ownership so that you understand the real benefits you can bring there, how you can get access to this technology. Um, and then we're going to get into a technical demonstration. We'll wrap it all up by what we call ZFS in the real world. This is how you understand that you've got some options here. You can go and roll your own. You can learn what you've done today, put it into your uh, designs, or you can take it as a pre-built entity. Some of you may have heard of the technology we call Amber Road or the Storage 7000. This brings all of these things together in one place. And we're going to have a little look at that a bit later. OK, two things. Why do we need a new file system? Why can't we use what we've got before? 
Well, you're going to learn some things about what we can do with this file system. The nice thing about having a blank sheet of paper and saying, if we were starting from scratch is, you can really address those problems that have been niggling for the last few years. Silent data corruption, what's that all about? That's about data that gets changed and causes data corruptions and everybody thinks everything's okay until it goes wrong. The reasons, Tim will explain later that this can happen, faults in disk drive firmware, faults in host bus adapters, cosmic rays or whatever it would be. Most file systems can't deal with that effectively. ZFS can because it does end-to-end -end checksumming. We're going to learn about that. This is really important because everybody's quantity of data is getting so much larger. Administration, volume managers. You need specialist people with a lot of training to do basic tasks. One of the key things with ZFS I heard right back when it was being considered was people saying, if I add memory to my computer or my PC and I reboot it, it just works. Why can't I do the same thing with disks? Well, ZFS lets you do this. It lets you have two commands. That's all you need, and you can do everything. So you'll see your eureka moment at that time. Now, it's also taken the opportunity to improve some older, slower data management techniques, and we'll talk about those. The other point is this is not a storage session per se, but of course we're going to talk a bit about storage. So we're not going to go through lots of things about SANS and NFS and iSCSI and all this stuff. But what we consistently hear from our storage customers are these six things. It's very proprietary. Proprietary equals expensive equals lock-in. The barrier to exit is huge. People have got very large uh, shops using uh, proprietary storage. It's very expensive. Every time you want to add 